Allman reporting for Katie Chats here at Hot Docs in downtown Toronto with producer-composer Andrew Halliwell. How has it felt to have your film occupy the movie here at Hot Docs? Uh, to be honest, it's been a real dream come true for us because, uh, you know, when you first release a film, you've no expectations, no idea how it's going to be received. Um, you start with one festival and, you know, uh, do your world premiere, but this was uh, our Canadian premiere and the fact that it's at Hot Docs, which is exactly where we'd want to place it in the in the country and then we're going back to uh, Doxa in Vancouver and opening up that festival there, um, which is really exciting. It comes like the week right after uh, Hot Docs, so it's a lot of um, great buzz, support. Uh, yeah, no, it's it's been great. We've sold out the two screenings here and the one in Vancouver. Amazing. Congratulations. So Thank you. Yeah. When Occupy, the mm, the movement, mm -hmm. started happening, did you know from its inception that you were going to make a movie about it? Mm, yeah, it wasn't too long thereafter that we... Um, well, I pitched the idea to Corey uh, because he was making, uh, at the time, a short film series that he was putting out on YouTube uh, for different events that were going on in Occupy. And he was taking the media coverage and taking the, um, you know, like the shaky cam citizen journalist footage from uh, from the different protests and mixing it together and showing how these events were portrayed in the media and how they really happened you know from uh, the citizen journalist footage um, one of them became really popular uh, much more than any of the others and I think we did about eight in, in the end um, the one that went viral was called I am not moving and I think in the first month it got one or two million views so it was at that point that I said, you know, I think there's enough attention. I think there's enough interest. Um, and some, a doc needs to be made about this for posterity's sake. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm glad we did because uh, as it played out, you know, there was no matter which way Occupy went, whether it took off and, and sailed or whether, you know, it saw a demise and manifested into something else, you know, down the road. Um, it was an interesting story either way and also a good utility to um, political social uh, movements for the future mm -hmm. to learn from the mistakes and uh, and build on it mm -hmm. yeah and elaborating on the point of media a little bit farther what's the importance of sort of shedding light on how media manipulates movements such as this one um, in terms of changing it for future political movements and how audiences and regular civilians sort of conceptualize what's happening? Yeah, I, I think the big um, one element that plays a huge factor in all of this is uh, just the fact that people have iPhones now and you know smartphones that take high definition video. People take cameras like these to, uh, to protest even um, and they put that in information up on the web or they're live streaming it to the web. At, in real time so people watch these live streams through say global revolution um, which is like an online channel and they just take all these different feeds coming in um, and wherever there's conflict they feature that feed now you're seeing it in real time and maybe in two hours later you're seeing it on CNN but it's had or Fox or MSNBC any of them and it's had some sort of spin added to it um, now I think that's the only way we can really thwart it, and I think it's a great way to thwart it. I mean, because there's no, um, there's no better tool. I think we could just direct more people to that avenue, you know, to the live streaming avenue before they make up a decision based on what they're hearing from the mainstream. But it's a, it's a real uh, blessing in a way that that exists for our generation because that did not exist for, say, the civil liberties movement, you know? You really relied entirely on the mainstream media, yeah. Do you hope to make more political films in the future? Yeah, I hope to make more uh, films about um, politics and science and technology. Those, those subjects really interest me, and I think that um, creating uh, literacy, especially when it comes to those topics, really uh, serve society as a whole a benefit. Um, not, you know, an in-depth sort of academic knowledge, but just a literacy. Um, but yeah, political. Yeah. How have specific audience members been responding to this film so far, and how do you think it's 
changed the world uh, so far in its screenings? Well, it's uh, it's it's early days, but with the uh, the reception that we've had at Hot Dogs, um, it's been excellent. I mean, just judging by we've had full theaters, and then we do Q and A's afterwards, and I would say about eighty percent of the audience stays for the Q and A afterwards, um, and we get a lot of supportive comments and questions. People saying, you know, how can we support the film? more people need to see this what can we do to help and you know I just tell them go uh, we're on Twitter at the Occupy movie um, on Facebook if you just search for us occupy the movie.com it's all there like uh, from our hub on the web um, and I you know I'll tweet out when the film gets launched on certain platforms you know when it's on iTunes or Netflix or whatever like I'll notify people and uh, that really helps also if you have a local film festival like say you're not from Toronto you're from some other city requesting it at your film festival um, and uh, and I think that really serves to the outreach and getting the message out there to a lot of people yeah, yeah. well thank you so much congratulations and best of luck with the film thank you very much Katie I'm Katie Ullman reporting for Katie Chats here at Hot Docs in downtown Toronto. Cool. Thank you.